All right, I received an email, a guy looking for some help. Let me read it to you. Hi, I have multiple 9.9 .9 and 15 Johnson motors. I'm hoping to get your assistance and guidance converting two of them to remote starting, shifting, and steering. Curious what I'll need for remote starting. The first priority will be on a 26-foot sailboat and the other on a small dinghy hull, possibly a Boston Whaler 9 or 11. The engines he has are a 1987 to 1992 Johnson 9.9 .9 Sailmaster, 92 Johnson 15 Rope, 1977 Evernood 9.9 .9 Electric Start, 1979 Johnson 15 Rope. Sailmaster is corroded and will become parts motor. The early Evernood is parts motor too. I want to make the 79 92 remote control engines. Alright, so let's go ahead and go through this. Alright, this is the 15 horsepower I've been working on. The first thing you're going to want to do is convert the engine you have over to electric start. So what you're going to need to do that is remove the starter, just holding these two bolts, and there's a cable that runs through here. You're going to remove that pin, and then you'll be able to get to the bypass cover, or intake cover, right here. It's holding in with six screws. There's a cable that runs through the starter, under your ignition plate, so you have to remove that too, and then it runs down here to your neutral safety switch which then connects to the cable that runs through the front of the engine. You're also going to need to swap the terminal block and the rectifier over to your uh, non-electric start engine. Then you're going to need a whole slew of other parts. So this will connect to your remote start harness. This is, a, this is an OMC solenoid or Evernerd solenoid. You don't necessarily need to get one of these. You can use a uh, old Ford relay that you can get it all to zone for $12. I think these new from Evinrude are $25 or $26. I'm not entirely sure. This is the remote steering bracket, which is going to connect to the front of the engine and give the option for remote steering. It's got the, your slot inside of there, which will give you a whole lot of different options on ways to connect your steering cable or steering arms to. This particular attachment is made for the older cable steering type. This clips into here and goes on a sew. But there's other ways to do this if you're going to use an actual steering cable. There's other attachments you can get to use into that. You also have this screw on the bottom. That's primarily used if you're using this as an auxiliary motor, not the main. So you should probably look into a way to attach your steering cable to the front of this. Now, there's a few different ways to connect your throttle and shift cables. This is a mock-up I'm going to use for my demonstration here. This is an older style attachment. This is going to be for your shift cable. Let me see if I can back a little bit there. See how long that is? That's kind of the, one of the reasons I think they got rid of this type of bracket and went to the more modern smaller bracket, which would then attach right there. Cable would run through and attach to your shifter. So that's the newer style to do it. Now, sorry for that falling. This is just a mock up I'm doing. I'm going to give you a better example of how long that is. So if you're limited on room, that may be an issue for you, especially when you consider you're going to have another bracket sitting out right here for your steering cable. That might be a, a little challenge, but I'll show you the one of the problems you're going to have using this part versus using this part. Then you have your throttle cable. This is one of the original brackets that they had. Your anchor block attaches to this. This screws onto the side of the motor, and your throttle cable runs to the front, and it would attach to your throttle gear. That, this way works fine. There is a new way that I prefer. That comes in this kit. I'm going to show you the part number for that kit, so you can hit pause and get a good view right on that number. This comes with instructions, some clips, but <clears throat> what you're really after is this guy. What this does gives you a little slot inside for your cable to attach into. Once that's inside, this then fits into the front of the motor right there and leaves a whole lot of bulkiness coming out through the front and doesn't require you to drill any holes in the side. Now some of these lower pans or lower hood covers are already going to have the indents for the holes, but it's still going to require some holes. So I prefer this way. This is $26. I don't know what this costs, but probably about the same. Those two holes in the front are what are going to be used to attach this bracket to. That will kind of give you an idea of how long that is. It, like I said, if you're limited on room or need to tilt this engine up frequently, you may run into problems with all the accessories that are going to be hanging off the front of this engine. Now, 
one of the problems that you're probably going to struggle with is the choke. This engine has a choke solenoid on it. This choke solenoid's pretty hard to come by. It's you can buy some of it new. It's pretty expensive. I think this alone is seventy dollars. And then you need the bracket down here, and I'll look up the part numbers for that and give you an exact cost. But you're still going to have a problem finding this. One of the let's say you can find a used one. Then you have that link right there that connects the choke solenoid to the choke on the carburetor. I was looking for months before I found this one. So you're gonna, it's gonna be, I think, a little bit of a struggle to find a ch choke solenoid for this area of an engine. All right, this is your early adapter kit. So this will give you the original bracket, the original steering bracket, and the original throttle bracket. So this kit is still available new. Actually, it is not. I am corrected. However, there is one over on eBay. The problem is they're missing the steering bracket, but this will still work for you. That will give you the long piece as well as the other one, and it's $34. So you're going to need this guy. You can buy it new. It's $20. Part number is 0319948. Now there's a few different options of these. Some have a large hole right here for the light connector. Since you're going to have battery charging, you don't really need that, so any one of these will work fine for you. Now this is the newer kit. This little guy, entire setup, costs $142.99 new. Not necessarily a good price, but not a bad price either. So if you're going to buy these parts separately, number 10 here, the main bracket, is $75. But this little short bracket requires this special connector. And it runs for $12, and then you also need a pin guide, which is number 9 here, for $33. So this setup gets a little costly, but it is much less bulky. Now for the choke. Now, if you're going to be using this on a 9 or 11 foot boat, you can probably reach behind you and reach the choke okay. So you may not even need to worry about this. But let me go ahead and show you the, what these costs. So the choke solenoid body here is $121.37. The bracket is $33.91. The main plunger is not available. And you're going to need a special choke arm, which is also not available, as along with this link, which is also not available. So getting this choke is going to be a little hard. They weren't on very many motors, and it was an expensive kit when you could get it. So let me go ahead and show you this one. This seller claims it's the entire kit. The problem is it's not. It's all of the boat side wiring. So what this will do is give you the key switch and the cables and everything for the engine's boat side. You'll still need one for the engine side. And like I said, it's not a complete kit. It doesn't have the choke solenoid. And nothing in here you can't rig together using just cables, wires, and switches. I honestly don't think that this is worth $175. Even $75 is a bit of a stretch in my book, given how old these wires are. Now, there is this choke solenoid available here on eBay. The guy wants $63, and given the cost of it, that's not a bad price at all. His issue is he's missing the plunger. Without the plunger, this thing's useless. Also, his wire was cut. Not a big deal, but if you look, there's not really much to work with there, and you don't want to use that type of spade terminal. Well, I suppose you could if you put some heat shrink over there and crimped on a new wire, but still, it's a little, little gray area. Not a bad part. It's a start, but not everything you're going to need. Like I said, you, with such a small boat, you might be able to skip this part entirely, and just reach behind you and use the choke when you need to. Now you're going to need a controller. So in this first one I'm showing you a shifter. You don't necessarily need one of these just because you don't need those cable casings. I wouldn't get one of these just because they're they're pretty old. It'll work if you have one, great, but I wouldn't go out and buy one. Next option here is this guy. This is made for a electric shift. This has a single lever, but it's only for throttle, so you can't use one of these either. This is your simplex. This will work fine. It's got two levers, shift and throttle. It doesn't have any electronics, which will be good for what you're doing, since it's all got to be externally mounted anyway. Um, the problem with this is your plastic safety parts inside of your Evnrude, if still engaged, or might be an issue for you. 
if you try to throttle it up too far without it being in gear, you have, you run a risk of breaking something. If you're the only one going to be operating the boat and you know to not force that handle if it's not moving, great. But if somebody else is, you might run into a little bit of an issue. By the way, the Simplex is the cheapest option. So one of these might be good because you can only move the handle so far before it force it, or engages it in the gear, in which case you wouldn't break anything in the engine. Uh, these type of controllers, they start to get pretty expensive. This one, the guy wants $200 for it, and it's got that red plug in the wiring key. None of that's going to work for what you're doing unless you cut the end of that plug off and wire it into your relay and choke and all that stuff. Doable, don't get me wrong, but still a lot of wiring and a lot of work and a lot of cost. You could run one of these if you wanted to. Um, I, I personally, this is one of my favorite types of controllers, the design to it. You obviously don't need power trim and tilt. You, again, you don't need the key, but it's a little less involved wiring, so if you did want to wire it all to the controller, this may be a better option for you. But again, we start getting into pretty costly territory. And same with one of these. Um, these are the newest, most available. Parts are readily available for these, and it's, a, it's overall a great controller, but again, cost. So, Decide what kind of controller you want. I'm going to use a simplex on that engine I just showed you, but that's just my preference. All right, so to summarize, this is going to fit your both pre-1980 engines. So what you're going to be doing is removing the electric start from 1977 engine, install it onto your 1979 engine. You can get new style or old style shift throttle and steering brackets. And here I have the part numbers that you're going to need. Now there's two different kits available, depending on what year you're looking at, but either one of those should do fine for you. The 389733 or the 393053. Now the shift bracket included in that newer style kit is part number 321637. So if you want to go with the older style, it doesn't require a special cable end. You're going to look for adapter kit 386660. Or if you can't find the kit and want to source the parts individually, you're looking for shift bracket part number 319949, throttle bracket part number 319950, and the anchor block for that, which is 310685. So if you do wind up sourcing all the parts individually, try to get ones that have hardware. That way you don't have to worry about trying to chase that down. Um, now my other column here, the throttle connector, that plastic one I showed you, that is part number 435448. That'll work on, well, with any type of adapter kit you do end up getting. Um, steering brackets are the same throughout the years for this series. Uh, the only difference, like I said, is with lighting or without. So no lighting is 319948, or with lighting, which may be a little harder to find, is 320146. But like I said, since you have battery charging, you don't need one for lights only. So you could probably just get the $20 get it anywhere 319 948 part number. Well, I'll make another video for your 90s engine, but this will cover the ones for the 70s. Alright, your 1992 engines are going to be the same way. You didn't mention if your 9.9 .9 Sailmaster was uh, electric start or not. Let's hope it is, because those parts might be a little hard to come by, too. I mean, you can come by them, but they're expensive. Now, your, nine, your 92 15-horsepower rope start with charging, that probably not going to help you much, not without the bypass cover bracket to use for the starter, the starter, and the flywheel with the ring gear. It will have the stator inside. It'll give you the charging option, probably the junction block and the Rectifier, but the main parts, your starter, your bracket, and your flywheel, you're going to have to hunt those down. But, like I said, that's if your 9.9 .9 Sailmaster doesn't have electric start already. So, as far as converting it to remote steering, the bracket steering brackets are going to be the same as, as on your other engines. And the throttle and shift brackets are pretty similar. Same part numbers for the cable end and for the shift bracket. The only difference you're really going to see is the throttle connector, and this kit comes with a, uh, a little grommet here to hide all the holes and everything, but the parts are pretty much the same. I think the adapter kit is even the same part number. That uh, may not be, but the adapter kit for that one, if you want to get the whole kit, is 0398032. So that's pretty much all you're really going to need to know for that one. The, they're pretty interchangeable. A primer solenoid is available for it, which is 
pretty good because you can't get the choke. Um, it's kind of expensive if you want to buy it new, but you can get them on eBay pretty cheaply. Uh, the only thing you may not may need to get additionally is the bracket for it, part number 24 here, and the other bracket, which is part number 23. So 23 is nine dollars. It is part number 0335842, and then this other little strap here, item number 24, is two dollars. Part number 091. 0201. Now you could get the choke solenoid option too. It comes with the cable inside of that link I showed you. But the solenoids available, you can get those on eBay, and the brackets are cheap, so that's a pretty good way to get a solenoid on that engine. In 92, a tilt tube was available for your engine. The 92 anyway. Um, if yours has a tilt tube, that'll completely change your steering options. You no longer need to get a bunch of adapters and kind of rig something together. Now you can just run a arm that looks like that and bolt right to the motor. Easiest way in the world to steer it. Um, if you don't have a tilt tube, you can buy and add one in there. That's an option. Let me know how uh, if you need help with that. But if, let's hope you have a tilt tube. If you don't, then you can just also use the same steering brackets that your other engines are going to use. All right, here are your part numbers you need for that engine. Uh, primer solenoid is 0434762. Four, I would just look that up on eBay. And then the bracket and clamp, those are pretty cheap. You can buy those new. Um, bracket is 0335842. Clamp is 0910201. Uh, your shift throttle kit is 0398032. That's 140 something dollars new. But like I said, you can just source the parts elsewhere. Um, and then the steering adapter kits, you can either buy individually or the entire kit, however you want to do it. Part numbers are there, but I also read them off on the other one. So, if you need anything, just let me know. If you've got any more questions, free to help you out. Have a good one.